tells us in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter and the 57th verse, that we have victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Apostle William Whitfield, and I'm welcoming you to our weekly broadcast. Those of you who follow us on Eternal Life TV, Facebook Live, Blue Jeans, and even on the God in Light prayer line, we are just so grateful unto the Lord for each and every one of you. I can't begin to express the type of opportunities that the Lord has given to us to be able to present through these venues the word of the Lord. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says this, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are so grateful unto the Lord to have you here with us today, whether you're watching us on Eternal Life TV, whether you're watching us on Facebook Live, Blue Jeans, or listening to us through the God in Light prayer line and ministries. However you're listening to us or watching us, we're just so appreciative unto the Lord for you and for the opportunity to be able to speak into the lives of God's people. And today there is a word from the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love it when the Lord always speaks and gives us a word. Amen. We know that those folks out there on Facebook Live and uh, YouTube and all of those other venues in which this ministry is on, we pray that when you post your comments, please don't be disrespectful to the spirit of grace and the Lord. If you don't understand something, it's always a good thing to pray and ask the Lord to reveal to you what he is saying and what he is doing. Amen. I'm just so happy to, to just be able to share what God is doing. This morning when I woke up, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and he spoke these words clearly, which we're going to talk about today. Amen. It's good to have a prayer life and it's good to listen to the Spirit of God and let him lead and guide us through all manner of of truth. So today we're going to be talking about because you are full of challenges. Listen to what the Lord said. Because you are full of challenges, I will give you nothing but hope. Because you are full of challenges, because we are full of challenges, God today is letting us know that he is coming to give us nothing but hope. That is in and by itself is a reason and an opportunity to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Isn't it good to know that God understands and knows that his people are experiencing difficulties in life? Isn't it equally good to know that God himself says, I will give you nothing but hope. I'm going to give you something to hope in, to trust in, to be dependent upon, to gravitate towards. Something that will not disappoint you. Something that will not embarrass you. Make you feel ashamed. That you will not be rejected. That you will not be despised. That you will not be broken. That you are not forsaken. But he is right there with you every step of the way. I don't know about you, but that's enough to rejoice right there. As a matter of fact, I feel so confident in this word today. I really could leave all speaking right here, right now. But I'm going to give you what the Lord has given me to say. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14, it says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. Too many times people think that the Lord is intending evil against them. But he said to give you an expected end, something that you could be happy about, jubilant about, joyful about. When you embrace and accept the Lord Jesus Christ and are walking in a way and a method that is pleasing unto him. He said to give and not of evil 
to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. This is God saying that he will hearken unto our prayers and unto our request. When we know that he is not intending evil against us, then are we more prone and more inclined to seek the face of the Lord through prayer. We are at a point in our lives where we must come before the presence of a holy God, of our most holy God. Where we come before him out of the petitions of our hearts, out of the abundance of our hearts, and seek him unlike we've ever sought him before. This is where our souls cry out to the Most High God. He's telling us. He's already given us a thought. He's thinking of thoughts of us towards us. Say of the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end. They said, then shall you call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken to you. I will listen. I will be moved by your petitions. I will be moved by the prayers that are coming out of your mouth and will be so inclined as the living God to move upon the petition of your heart. That is fascinating to me. That the, God, that the God of all the universe will say that he will yield and hearken unto mankind who is coming to him with a petition that he will not reject, but he will hear, listen, and the objective is he would fulfill the desires of our heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity. Anything that is keeping your attention captive from him. Anything that is keeping you captive from the will of God. Anything that has you in prison. Anything that has you possessed or oppressed and depress. He's saying that if you seek me, I will turn your captivity. At the time that he was speaking this, he was speaking to people who were already in captivity or gone into captivity, who were free men, but yet did not realize they were captive by the devil. When we come to the point in our lives in God that we realize that we have been captive by the spirit of evil. That there is an influence that is over our lives that God never once intended to be there. Then will we open up and appreciate the setting free of our hearts. Listen to what he says in the next part of that verse. And I will gather you from all nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I cause you to be carried away. I don't know about you, but there is something in my spirit that wants to get back, not going backwards, but recapturing those things which were beneficial to a healthy, wholesome relationship with the Lord. And employing those things and enhancing and adding to it for the express purposes of the will of God to be accomplished 
in the earth. I want to say that again. For the will of God to be accomplished in the earth, in the earthen realm, in the earthen realm. We always want God to actually do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Listen, many don't believe in the hope of the Lord. Change your mindset today to hope in the Lord. We're not going to go deep. We're not going to go profound. We're just going to go from the point of the scriptures. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the word of God, not from our opinions, not from our intellect, but allowing the spirit of the living God to speak to us through scriptures. Romans 5, 3 through 6 says this, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Also, knowing that tribulation work of patience, and patience, experience, and listen, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet with our strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Everything that you experience and go through ought to add to your level of hope. And hope maketh not a shame. If you are hoping in the Lord and have been disappointed, the question is, you need to check. How strong was your faith? How strong was your hope in the Lord? Because the Bible says, and hope maketh not a shame. Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Here's the question. Have you allowed the love of God to be shed forth into your life? Maybe that's why things seem hopeless to you. Maybe that's why God is not answering your prayers. You can't reject him, pray to him, and hope to receive the petition of your hearts. Hope, faith, Trust in God, receiving of him, believing in him, and allowing the Holy Ghost to lead and guide you, go hand in hand. Unequivocally, they must function together. From a mindset that rejects to a mind that accepts and embrace, listen, I know some of you that are watching will challenge me, but it's all right. But let me tell you this. I'm only sharing the gospel, the good news of Christ with you because I care about you. Do I follow this faith blindly? You best believe I do. If someone consider me to be brainwashed, then yes, I am for the sake to know Jesus Christ. I want to know the mind of Jesus Christ so that when I speak into your lives, you will gravitate and understand through the passion and the love that Christ has for you that hope is no longer a thing that will elude you, but it will follow you, it will chase you down, and it will cause you to believe in God unlike you have ever believed in him before. The sad thing, is those who were once enlightened by the spirit of grace who have now turned away from him have rejected him and in their own cynical mindset arrogant and prideful 
and disrespectful to the spirit of grace who wants to cause others' faith to be abandoned and shipped wrecked. I come against that spirit of defiance in the name of Jesus Christ. Who are we to think that we have the audacity to shipwreck someone else's faith, let alone our own, and not understanding that there are severe ramifications spiritually. But I want you that have a hope in God, that are struggling, to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ have made you free, and be not entangled again with the yoke a bondage, casting aside every weight and every sin that thus so easily beset you, rejecting philosophies and vain sayings, and those who are of a heart that has been seared with a hot iron, who have become reprobate in their thinking and in their minds. But that's not the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. There is a faith and a hope that God would have you to gravitate towards. Listen to Lamentations 3, 17 through 26. And though thou hast removed my soul far from peace, I forgot prosperity. And I said my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord, remembering mine affliction and my misery. The wormwood and the gall, these are people who have not hope. And those who don't have hope, if you listen to them, they're miserable on the inside. Whenever they fight against the word of the Lord, the servant of the Lord. It only shows the further degeneration of their mindset and their spiritual state. But listen to what the writer says. Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. Aren't you tired of being in misery? Don't you want to be happy? Not false happiness, but true happiness. My soul have them still in remembrance and humbled in me. Some of you that have walked away from the Lord, you still have those things in your heart that the Lord has done for you. Release that hard and stony heart and hope again in him. My soul still have them in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, Hallelujah, I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seek of him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. God wants you to wait patiently. Wait on the Lord. Be of good carriage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Romans 15 and 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Abound. Be, be in abundance. Be overly joyful. Have more than enough. Have your prayers answered in ways that you never thought or expected them to be. 
1 Corinthians 9 and 10. Or save he altogether for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt. This is written. That he that ploweth should plow in hope. And that all and he that thresheth in hope should be partakers of his hope. When you have hope, you're planting a seed. And when the season of harvest comes, You're harvesting what you have sown in hope. You will reap it in the same or increased measures of hope. And that he that thresheth in hope should be partakers of his hope. Listen, no pestilence, no caterpillars, no canker worms, no palmer worms will eat this crop of hope. This will be not this will not be subject to blight. This will not be subject to being consumed by an enemy. God said from this harvest of hope you will be sustained plentifully. For years, for decades to come, listen, in joy, in happiness, in jubilation, in exhilaration, you will be overwhelmed with a sense of peacefulness and the feeling of the Spirit of the Lord right there with you. Right there with you. Knowing that God is there. Psalm 16 and 9. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Psalm 16 and 9. Psalm 71 and 14. But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. That's the heart of someone who is walking in faith. And allowing their hope in God to lead them, lead them to celebration. Listen, your destination for hope is celebration. When you celebrate the Lord in advance, you're only saying to him by faith, I trust you, I believe you. I ask that you remove all safety nets. And God, when I trust in you, I know you will not disappoint. I know you will not fail. Therefore, I'm happy to be a servant of the King of Kings and the Lord of glory. Listen, Just a few moments, we have Psalms 119 and 114. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Galatians 5 and 5. For we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Psalms 31, 24. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. And finally, Psalms 146 and 5. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. If you take nothing away from today, I want you to take this one powerful thing away with you. Hope is a weapon that God has strategically Placed in your hands to defeat depression, oppression, depression, and will always help you to rebound back in him. Never allow the devil or anyone to tell you that God does not have your best interest in mind. This ministry is a blessing unto you. 
Continue to watch us on Eternal Life TV and follow us on the God. God bless you and have a wonderful week in the Lord. Thank you.